Thank you, Commissioner Fariello, and good morning. It's really an amazing thing that I'm looking at a sold out um, audience. The room is just full, and we're so excited to have you here. So, I'm going to begin by giving you a little bit of background and hopefully some useful information that you will use uh, throughout your use of the building code. So why are we here and why do we revise the building codes? Well, it started with the events of September 11th. Uh, there was a commission formed by the mayor and they recommended that we update the codes. At that time, all of a sudden, the codes became forefront in people's minds about the things that we need to do to keep it modern and up to date. People realized that the 1968 code was 40 years old. So the commission recommended adopting uh, the International Code Council's Family of Codes as the basis for code revision and it further recommended that the Department of Buildings include a broad array of stakeholders in the revision process. And that's what we've done, and we've done it twice now. Uh, whoops. You OK? Uh, <laughs> it further, this commission further recommended um, a periodic revision to make sure that the codes never get old and stale. And that's why we're here today, is to review the first periodic revision to our New York City construction codes. Um, we utilize the ICC format, um, and we make it, in this way, the codes will be um, easier to use, it will ma we'll maintain consistency with other jurisdictions used throughout the country. James likes to say that our codes are always a little bit behind the times, um, but we wanted to explain to you that the 2008 code was based on the 2003 ICC and modified by our committees for use in New York City. We then skipped the 2006 code and went directly to the 2009, and that's the basis for this 2014 code. So we worked on this with the committees for more than two years, and in December, the mayor, the mayor signed, the council passed, and the local law 141 of 2013, uh, which was the, the basis for the code revision. Uh, the majority of the provisions will become effective um, in, on October 1st, 2014. We're now in the middle part, as you know, of implementation and training. That's why we're here. So, the department is, at, is hard at work um, implementing all the, the changes to the department, making the rules, drafting rules, uh, revising the forms, changing our operations to support the changes that the committees made uh, to the code. We're also training our staff, and we've conducted events similar to this in all the boroughs. This one is the largest, and we're so excited that so many people are attending these outreach um, events. We're also working to put information on our internet, our, our intranet for the department's use, as well as working with the International Code Council to um, publish the new integrated 2014 code. So at this time, before the codes are available, I wanted, to, I wanted you to understand a few tools that are available for your use on our website. So if you go to the department's website at nyc.gov buildings and you 
you click on codes and reference on the left-hand side of the toolbar, uh, you can access Local Law 141 of 2013 or Local Law 41 of 2012, which are the plumbing code provisions, by clicking on this. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but in the circle, uh, it says Local Law 141. On the department's website is a list of every single local law that amends our codes. And you can um, access it just by clicking on the local law number. So once you access, uh, local laws are drafted in a special, almost secret language, as some of us have found out. And I wanted you all to understand how to read the local law on site, on our website. Um, so, text that is deleted from our current code is bracketed. We use the square brackets. So in this example, 706.3.6 will be deleted and new text is underlined. So the new no section number is 707.3.8. And you will see this throughout the local law. There are more than 2,500 pages of revisions, and you can see then what the exact um, changes are. Sometimes, I want to point out that these brackets, the beginning and end, may be several paragraphs or even pages from each other. So you have to check to make sure that you see what is between the brackets to know what is being deleted. And sometimes text that, is be that looks like it's being deleted is actually just being moved to another place, but that will be underlined so it will look like new text, but it's just been moved. So if the 2,500 pages of Local Law 141 of 2013 were not enough, the council also passed six additional local laws that will also become effective when the new code becomes effective on October 1st. Most of these, these local laws were a result of Sandy and the city's Buildings Resiliency Task Force. And of course, if that was not enough, uh, this current council is very busy and they passed five additional local laws that will also amend our code. And when the 2014 code will be published, all of these local laws will be seamlessly integrated into the code for your use. Uh, the last thing I'd like to, to talk to you about is some of the tools that are useful um, for you uh, to navigate what will be available on the, on the 2014 code. Currently, if you go to, again, if you go to codes and references and you click on the 2008 code, there are a number of tools that will help you figure out what's, of, what's there and what you need to do. When the 2014 codes are available, there will be another option for you to click on and you can click on the 2014 code and the same information will be there. But I just want to briefly explain what these things are so that you'll know. Uh, the first thing is um, there will be information for you to view online or to purchase the code. Um, I know that Dottie Harris is here. And Dottie is our representative from our publisher, the ICC, and she'll have information about how you can purchase, the when they're available, the 2014 New York City construction codes. That information is also available on our website. And it all, our website will also give you information on how to view uh, the 2014 code or the 2008 code. And finally, on the bottom are local, 
our, our, our update pages, it's easy for me to say. Um, when the council uh, passes a local law that amends our construction codes, the department staff creates these update pages so that you can click on the update page, print it out, and insert it into your building code because the council is always very busy. They've passed 77 local laws since the 2014 code uh, became effective. Um, I skipped the first two things because I'm going to go into them in a little more detail so you'll, you can understand what we have. Um, the first item is an index. We've created an index of all the code amendments. In other words, and what we've done is we've listed by section of the code all the times that a local law has been passed that amends that code. So here you can see that it's organized by section, and the first example, 28-101.4.3, has been amended four times. And the first one by local law 75 of 09, you can click on that local law, and it will bring you to the original text of the local law if you wish to see it. Also in the index, it gives you an effective date. So if you're, if you're designing alterations to an existing building and you want to know what code was in effect, this will help you to understand when the amendments went into effect. And again, the, third, the fourth column tells you whether the section is new or amended or it's been deleted. And finally, uh, the last column tells you what update page you can find this for your own code. The last thing that um, I'd like to describe to you is we have put on our website the administrative code, the general provisions of the administrative code, uh, lovingly known in the department as Title 28. Uh, this is New York City's administrative, general administrative provisions, and it appears seamlessly integrated for your convenience and ease of use, and we also show, um, again, just like the index, there is an asterisk before each section if it's been amended, and if you go to the bottom of that section, you'll see the local law, and you can click on the local law to see what it was that was changed. So I hope you find that useful. Um, and again, we will be doing this for the 2014 code as well. So thank you for your time. Now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, James Colgate. James is our Assistant Commissioner for Tech Affairs and Code Development, and he's also the floodplain administrator for New York City. James received his Bachelor of Arts degree from NYU, a Master's degree of Architecture, and a Certificate in Historic Preservation from the University of Pennsylvania, and a Juris Doctor from Fordham University School of Law. He is a registered architect, and a licensed attorney in the states of New York and Connecticut. James, 